Anyways, let's look at the second thing, which is decibel scale here. Uh, if I had more time, I would have found something online to show you this. This, um, this is another example of a logarithmic scale. I want to tell you at the outset here, some grade 12s, um, they, grade 12 seem to like to draw a line and say, I, I was okay up to here, then I totally don't get it after that. I, I find when they come in for help, they like to say, this is where the line is, I don't get it after that. Or else they just say, I don't get any of this, right? I mean, it's, it's better to actually be specific about it, but I'm trying to figure out why this is. It's, uh, it's equivalent to in grade eight, you know, grade eights will say, I, I totally get how to do this. 2x plus 7 equals 15. I know how to solve that. And then you give them something like 1.7x plus 6.2 equals 10.9. They say, totally don't get it. I don't know. I don't get it, right? And the only difference is the numbers look different. The concept's the same. The concept's the same here. Here's the only thing, okay? This is what it would be equivalent to. If I gave you a problem where the measurements were in meters, and you say, totally get it, understand it, but then I suddenly said, ah, now we're doing something with centimeters. Okay? Oh, don't get it with centimeters. This is, this is the problem here. There's a scale that was set up, uh, and the unit of, that we're using here is called the bell, except nobody ever uses bells because it's such a big unit. They use decibels, right? You've probably never thought about it that maybe you've never even used the word decibels, but if you look at your stereo or TV or something, sometimes the, the sound level has these units on it. Sometimes it just says whether it's like a slider or, uh, you know, a round knob or something, it just has numbers. I don't know if these numbers have anything to do with actually directly referring to this or they're just numbers Either way, uh, loudness of sound is a logarithmic scale because, like, leaf rustling is so insignificant compared to jet engine. If we made the scale, it would be like the money thing we had, where the thing at the top, you don't, none of these even register because they're in different magnitudes. It isn't that this is a hundred and this is fifty, right? This is this is you know, 10 to the 6, and this is 10 to the 1. The numbers are totally different. The only difference here is that the scale is set up in bells. The logarithmic aspect of the scale is in bells. So zero bells is whatever they call the threshold of hearing, like below that you can't hear it. One bell and two bells and three bells. On here, this is one bell or 10 decibels. And this is two bells, or 20 decibels, or 30, or 40, or 50, okay? 100 decibels is 10 bells. The logarithmic aspect of the scale is in bells. If you change them to bells, it's exactly the same as the earthquake scale. Works exactly the same way. The two things that they picked out here were... To start with here, a power saw, which is 120 decibels, or how many bells is that? 12 bells. And a telephone dial tone. I find this hard to believe that this is 80 decibels. I think what they meant is like a telephone ringing, but I don't know, whatever. It depends on how loud your phone is. This, this scale is weird because some of the things on here were probably like put on here long, long ago, not quite as long ago as Alexander Graham Bell, but some of them are more recent. But I'm thinking of these things are the traditional things from 40 years ago, because nowadays, talking about how loud is a telephone dial tone, well, there's a volume adjustment on it. And when this scale was made, there was no volume adjustment. Everybody had this black phone that you pick up when you do the dial and all that. So nonetheless, some of the things on here you can relate to, right? I mean, the actual things on here, they're just giving you a rough idea of what we're talking about. Anyways, whatever this is, 80 decibels, 8 bells. Please realize, because a lot of people would say, oh, I know you do this, you go 10 to the power, 120 minus 80, 10 to the 40th. Yes, I got it, I understand, right? But if you stop and think about what that is, 10 to the 40th, 
one with 40 zeros, like a hundred gajillion, whatever that is, that's a, that's a lot, right? I realize that it takes a lot of telephone dial tones to make up a power saw, but that's, th this is not right. The, the logarithmic aspect of this scale is in Bell. So instead of doing that, you have to do 12 minus 8. 10 to the 12 minus 8 gives you 10 to the 4th, which gives you how many times as loud? Yeah, 10,000 times as loud. All right, 10,000 times as loud. I would put down in here somewhere. You know, you know how we said a jump of one on here was ten times as much? You need to change this to bells before you do this. This is 15 bells, 12.5, 10. A jump of one bell is ten times as much. Okay? Notice this is... Okay? Three bells, a thousand times as much as one bell. So if we have something that is 145 decibels, I don't know this threshold of pain, why they call it that. I, it, it has something to do with, at a certain level, you actually cause permanent damage to your ears, right? My dad can, my dad can attest to this. He's losing his hearing, but then again, he's, you know, he runs a power saw there and, uh, the best thing you could do is, while you're hearing still good, use like ear protection when you're doing things that are loud. Anything above sort of here, you're going to do some permanent damage eventually. If you sit there running a power saw for hours and hours, even for five minutes, eventually it starts to build up, right? Standing next to a jet engine 20 meters away, you're going to do some permanent damage to your hearing. Um, Anyways, these two things here, this is 14.5 bells. This is 12.5 bells. You, you don't subtract those two numbers and say 10 to the 20th. 10 to the 20th is a very, very, very large number. It's, it's 10 to the, and I'm not doing a very good job of showing my work here, but let's do a better job for this question. Let's say the ratio of intensity. equals 10 to the power of 14.5 minus 12.5 equals 10 to the 2 equals 100. This is 100 times as loud. If you were a formula type person, you could probably say ratio is 10 to the bells 2 minus bells 1, not decibels, right? You got to divide each of them by 10 first. It's not any harder even though, I, as I told you, some Math 12 students draw the line there and say, that's where it's harder. I will let you do these questions for yourself, as has been the pattern so far, as I'll let you do the hard ones, but not right now, okay? Or do, or do you want to do it right now? This one, this one right now should be actually a higher level thinking question, because I tried to phrase it in a way that leads you to understand that does this mean, the answer is no, it does not mean, right? No. Two phones ringing do not add up to 160 decibels. It's not a linear scale, right? Let me refer back to the, to the thing that we looked at first. My silly example I made up, which was the fundraising thing, right? The fundraising thing. If you say, well, here is... Uh, a person who's at level two on my fundraising scale. Oops. If I have a person who's at level two on my fundraising scale because it's 10 to the two, $100, I can't take three of those and say two and two and two gets me up to level six, right? Because it's not linear. You can't say three people of $100 gets me a million dollars. It'd be nice if it worked that way. Just like you can't say, well, Earthquake of magnitude 2, all I have to do is take four of them and I get to magnitude 8, right? You can't take four earthquakes of insignificant magnitude that there could be one going on right now somewhere nearby and we wouldn't even notice and add up to this major earthquake. You can't take um, 
You can't take a bunch of leaves rustling and suddenly it's going to sound like a jet engine. You need a lot of leaves rustling all very close to you, right? You need millions and millions of leaves rustling. You can't say this is one bell. All I need is 15 leaves rustling and I get to the jet engine, right? 15 leaves rustling, not a jet engine. It's a, it's not a linear scale. So likewise, you can't say, oh look, two phones ringing, 160, much louder than one jet engine, right? Two phones ringing, don't do that. If you have two phones ringing, you need to say this is 10 to the 8th and 10 to the 8th. This is how much energy, this is how much energy. I need to say, how much is that all together? What does that equal? I need the logarithm of that. If I have two phones ringing, I can say it's 2 times 10 to the 8th, but that's not equal not equal to 10 to the 16th. Put a big X through that, right? Not equal to 10 to the 16th. But it is equal to something. It's not going to be a whole lot more than 80 decibels. Two phones ringing that are both 80, it's going to be 83 or something like that. If you want, the answer to this is 83 decibels. The last one here, this one actually is the one where people really moan and groan. And they moan and groan because they learned it in chemistry, but they didn't really understand what they were doing because they don't really necessarily always have the time in chemistry to understand this. And you haven't studied logarithms yet, so it's hard to, to do, right, before you understand that. The pH scale is a logarithmic scale. It is not hard. The reason that chemistry students find it hard is because they learn about it before they learn logarithms. The reason math 12 students find it hard and say, I don't get this, is because they're jaded by how they learned it in chemistry, or not how they learned it, how they didn't learn it. And the other problem is there's two directions to it. This way is more acidic. This way is more alkaline. The other scales didn't have that. We had louder, not so loud, right? You could say louder, quieter, and you could say, how many times quieter is it? And just to confuse the issue, this one you had bigger earthquake, not so big. We didn't have two different words for both directions, right? That's what the problem is here. If somebody says, if somebody says, how many times more uh, acidic is tomato juice than pure water? Pure water is seven. It's in the middle. Tomato juice is four. If it's if it goes down by three there, it's a thousand times as acidic. A thousand times as acidic, or it's one one thousandth times as alkaline. It's a thousand times as acidic, or one one thousandth times as alkaline. It depends on the direction you're going. Four and seven. If you go down three, it's a thousand times as as acidic. If you go up three, it's a thousand times as alkaline. Or you could ask weird things and say, how much more acidic is seawater than pure water? If you say how many more times is acidic, going up it's less acidic. It's like a tenth. I'll let you figure that out and I'll put some answers up here for you after. That's logarithmic scales.